Hello and welcome to the shed. In today's video we're going to be making a portable sharpening system that can come to the bench when you require to sharpen. Hope you enjoy. So I've been working with this prototype sharpening system and if you've seen some of my videos you'll see that I get the hold fast out and hold everything down and I've been working with this for a while and I keep coming back to it. It seems to work well for me so what I want to do is actually make a permanent one. I'm going to get a new piece of malamine for the base of this and since we're obviously doing woodworking here I'm going to use this wood grain veneered melamine which is actually a recycled shelf so we've got a little bit of upscaling going on this project so as it happens if we look back at my board here this piece actually happens to be the exact same size as this and this is the size that I'm looking for we're going to have to put a fence on it we're going to have to put a stop on it and we're then going to put another board on here which we can actually adjust and block out to actually hold the stones within the setup. I have my loose strop here that you might have seen in quite a few of my videos and you would have if you've seen any of them. Now this is going to stay separate because I like to have a portable strop that I bring out and I don't keep it with my sharpening setup because I like to use it when I'm carving and other things and just have it at the bench and nearby when I want to strop my tools. So let's bring you in here. I'll give you a few sizes on what we're going to do, show you a few bits that are going to go on and how you size out or how I size out to actually choose the gap that I'm going to have here and the way I'm going to hold my stones on said board. So this is obviously my prototype one where I'd have the hold fast holding this fence. So this is roughly where I want the fence to sit because when I'm working or using my water stones I like to keep my flattening stones sort of just off the back here out of the way just so it doesn't put water on, on my bench. So I like to just sit it here. So that's why I've got this gap here. I have the fence here which is obviously for the stones to push up against. Now you'll see the homemade jig that I've got here which I will be doing a video on at a later date. Now that's quite large so that's going to determine sort of the gap, the largest gap between this fence, which we can push up to about there, and where the second fence is going to go on the back here. Now I'm going to be making the fences out of this thin stock, which is about five, six mil thick. It doesn't have to be particularly thick, but if you're working just straight with your diamond stones, you don't want that to actually impede. So that's why I've got it this thin. So if you are using thin diamond stones, it doesn't get in the way and actually block you using this straight on the surface without a holder, which is what I tend to do quite a bit with my diamond stones. These are some Cerex water stones that I've got here. I think they were. I got them free when I purchased something. I haven't used them yet, but I want to make allowances for all of these. So what we're going to be doing is obviously splitting this piece of jar in half and we'll be making a fence up top here and one that runs in on the back here. So let's jump in. I'll give you a couple of measurements. So this is the board we're going to be bringing in here. And as it happens, it is almost identical to the board below. So I'm not going to change it. It does have one factory edge here, which I'm going to keep down my bottom edge here where more of the water is likely to get near it. It doesn't really matter. This old board actually got quite wet at times and it didn't cause any problems and I didn't put any kind of sealant on there. So we're just going to work with that. My measurements for this and it does depend exactly on what you want as to what measurements you go with. But my measurements here, this is 460 millimeters by 450 millimeters. So we're going to work off that measurement and make our fences to start with. And I'm also going to put a very hefty stop in the front here against my workbench because sometimes you can put quite a bit of force on when you're sharpening and I don't want that to come off. So these screws are going to be visible from the top. We're going to attach this first before we put the, the little stop on the top here. So we're going to cut this one to length. We're obviously going to cut this to length and chop that down the middle. So let's get to preparing the stock and then we can start attaching it and start putting this together. So first you need to find your edge that's going to push up against the bench and that's going to be this edge here for me. And 
I'm just going to come across here, just take a quick marking with my marking knife, just here, so now I know where I'm going to do this. And this doesn't have to be dead accurate, but you do want it under your board, you don't really want it sticking out the side. And every time we do this, you want to kind of work for accuracy. So then we bring in the bench hook. And if you haven't seen the video for this little bench hook that I've made, I'll leave that link down below for you to check it out. It's just a sacrificial hook holding your material at 90 degrees to make it easier for you to handsaw or cross cut usually. And it's also sacrificial so you protect your bench. So, since I said we were going to use half of this material, we have to rip this board down the middle. To rip thin material like this, I'm just going to be using basic rip saw, about seven teeth per inch, I think this one is, and we're going to saw it in the vise. Now, if you can't see the mark that your marking gauge is left on your board, Particularly on dark wood, a white pencil could work. I don't have any white pencils. So, just a normal leaded pencil or 2B pencil works quite well. Back on the saw. Get it started without too much vibration, hopefully. The side. And we're done. We can see that there's a little bit of a size difference in these. So we want to make sure we get them in their book match like this. Push them together and clamp them in the vise like so. We're going to go to our rough set hand plane and plane these down and then we'll go to the smoothing plane for the final finish as usual. Now that we've got that we can move on to our fine set plane. So now we need to go ahead and start putting this together. Now since we're working with melamine, you should probably use some sort of melamine type screw, but it's not essential. Any type of screw will work, and for a jig like this, it's not too bad, it doesn't really matter too much. But for the stop on this one, I'm going to be drilling through the top because the melamine doesn't have the strength to actually hold the screws very well, so I'm going to be drilling through the melamine into the piece of wood so the piece of wood can hold it. So the first step here is to attach our stop on the bottom here. So since this side is the bottom, we obviously need to get this held here. I'm going to go to my little trick that I've used many times before on this channel, and that is double-sided tape to actually hold this in place while we put some screws in from the other side. So we just need a couple of little sections, one there, one down the other end, and that'll hold it long enough for us to get some screws into it. I'm also going to just run the excess tape off so we have no overhang. So now the little trick to get this tape off, sharp point into the corner, lifts it. Now you could use some other sort of glue to hold this, some super glue would work well, but I just like the, the ease of use of the double sided tape. Uh, we line it up, and then this stuff sets via pressure. Quick push, and that is set in place. Now we want to do is bring this up here. Make sure you don't overhang this stop at this stage, because screwing into this is going to put a, quite a bit of pressure down on it. Now, to hold the stop, I'm going to go... Because this other fence will end up 
being right on this edge because of how long everything is, I'm gonna have to offset where I put the screws because of this fence. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So we're setting them off centered so they don't get in the way of these other ones. In actual fact, I'm gonna bring that one across a touch and just bring this one in a bit, just so we don't blow anything out on the edge. I'm gonna predetermine the length of the drill bit just like this, so we don't go too far. Like this, with the central ones first. So now we want to align our fence and I'm going to put the cut side out and once again some quick bits of double sided tape to hold it. Like so. Line it up again. Push it down. Now we've just got to put these screws in. So now that we've got that fence attached, we need to work out roughly where the fence at this edge here is going. So we want to space this one here so we can bring this into the middle. Since that's going to be our widest set, find out exactly where that's going to be. You want like a paper gap there just so this doesn't get stuck if it swells or when you're bringing it in and out. And then give yourself a guideline. We can see that we can get this piece in here. It has a little bit of wobble, but we can place this anywhere along here that we want. And that's nice. So if we make another one of these and you've got multiple stones, it's gonna work perfectly. So now we come to the smaller one here. Now, just so you can see, I'm gonna place it back here. So what we need to do is come in and measure the gap between the base of this and the fence and try and get ourselves a block that's going to help to alleviate movement within this. So this one is about 72 millimeters so we're going to go ahead and get a block of this same material and then we'll do the same with our diamond stone as well. And like magic we have our two spaces so we have our normal one coming in here. We can throw our normal watering stone straight into this, lock it in place, perfect. Then we have our other one here and we can put the spacer in on this side, it stops it moving. Or if we want to, we can put it on that side so we push forward into that spacer. Likewise, with the diamond stone, the same thing and still have a little bit of movement there and that's not going to affect anything. And since this is just sitting on here and doesn't have a rubber grip or isn't as tight as this one here, you could put some sort of non-slip under here if you really wanted to. There you have it folks, that's how I built my sharpening system. I've been working on this for about a year, year and a half working, trying to work out exactly what I want. And this is what I settled on because of the way I used my other one that was all flexible and I recommend that you actually do something like that. Work with a prototype. Yes, it's a little annoying having to clamp things and stuff until you get to what you want, but you're going to end up with a better final product or jig that you can use to get the job done. And yeah, as you can see, I just use scraps to do this and you can do the same too. If you'd like to see some more videos like the one you've seen here related to shop jigs, I'll leave a link up here to a video and maybe one down here. Bye for now.